Ripping HD DVDs uh, kind of sucks, mainly because the format itself sucks. It, it died very quickly. It lost the format war to Sony's Blu-ray disc for a gamut of reasons, many of which to this day still affect ripping and preserving those discs. And while honestly, there are probably very few, if any movies only released on HD DVD that aren't released on Blu-ray and would be better backed up from Blu-ray, if you have something on the HD DVD format in a actual movie just format that you wish to rip and back up, today's guide will show you how, but also hopefully help you avoid some of the pitfalls for getting there. We'll see, maybe. So first and foremost, we have to talk about the physical disc itself. HD DVD is a different disc. It is still a disc, but it is burned differently with a different laser and read back with a different laser than DVD, Blu-ray, CDs, whatever. You need a HD DVD compatible drive to read it. You can't just make any Blu-ray drive read it, although there are plenty of combo drives and normal DVD drives won't do it. And if you don't have an optical drive in your system at all, there's no magic here. People seem to think that some of these tutorials can just give you magic and make you rip discs without a disc drive. Not sure how. There are two paths that you can go, and one of them is completely not worth it. You can actually buy internal HD DVD burners that can be used to rip these discs. They are in the normal, you know, three and a half inch, or five and a quarter inch slot, rather, uh, that go on the front of a desktop tower if you still have one with those bays. I ended up purchasing that for this video, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but it is speed wise or quality or any of that isn't worth it what you should honestly do go to ebay if you don't have one of these already and pick you up an xbox 360 hd dvd player with power supply you can get them as low as i'm seeing 14 dollars 10 dollars if you pay shipping all the way up to 40 dollars and it connects over usb you plug it into the wall and it detects in your computer like a normal optical drive would and you can move forward it's where i recommend going you also will need a piece of software to rip it. I recommend the program Make MKV. It is available for free. You may notice when you launch it that it says that it's a trial. It says you can buy later and every 30 days you have to reinstall the trial if you want to keep it free. Now I have purchased the license because I use the software so heavily and I wish to not keep having to reinstall it or whatever, but even in the forums, the original creator has basically said it's kind of like donationware, where it will ask, say, hey, you want to buy this, but they will not, at least anytime soon, and this has been going on for years and years, actually insist that you pay money to use the software. So a lot of people get mad in the comment section. They're like, ah, oh, you got to pay for it. You don't have to pay for it. It's free software. Download and install that software, connect your drive, and put in a disk. Next, we're going to launch Make MKV. Click the drive button to access your disk, and it will start to read your disk and then you're available to start ripping. Now, if you have multiple disk drives connected to your system, for example, you already have a built-in DVD or Blu-ray player and you connect this HD DVD option, you will have to choose the drive letter that is for the HD DVD drive. It may show up as BD-ROM drive as well. Ideally, it'll be the only one with a movie in it at the moment, so you'll recognize it based on the movie name, but you will have to choose the correct drive. The drive will spin up, it'll get pretty loud, be kind of obnoxious for a minute, and then once you are ready, it will load all of the video files and things on the disc. Now, typically with HD DVDs, there's nothing fancy on it. There's not a whole lot of multiple copies of movies as far as I've been able to tell, like it's the case with Blu-rays and things like that. There should just be one primary movie and it's usually listed something like feature presentation underscore T00 and that's what you want. Uh, it will be the biggest one, usually about eight to 15 gigabytes, depending on your movie. When you have Make MKV open and you're going to choose your file to rip, you may still have some options for different audio tracks or subtitle tracks that you want to include. If you just want the main movie and audio, you can uncheck everything except for English, but typically since the audio and the subtitles don't take up a lot of extra space, usually I check all the different formats because you never know when you might want to turn on close. We've been watching a lot of stuff with closed captions lately or what have you, and so this is an option. You click it, you tell it where you want to save, so browse to a new location. I usually just do videos Blu-ray rips or videos HD DVD rips or the name of the movie or whatever, and tell it to rip, and it will take quite a long time, especially if you're using this Xbox 360 HD DVD player. Now, with the internal drive, since it connects through SATA, theoretically you can get faster speeds from it, but through my testing, I am getting the same ripping speed with the Xbox drive as the built-in drive, so I don't consider that an issue. However, there are a lot of other problems you might run into with ripping HD DVDs, and we're gonna talk about them right after a word from this video sponsor. 
Part of today's tutorial's goal is to help you save money. Today's sponsor can also help you do that at the new and improved epulsevox.ting.com. Cut your phone bill in half with Ting Mobile's brand new plans. Talk and text for only $10 a month, data plans starting at just $15 a month, five gigabytes of data for $25 a month, and unlimited from $45 a month. I think their new flex plan is the way to go for non-data heavy users. You pay for what you actually use during the month. So things are cheaper and you're never paying for unused services, which is always a frustrating part of any communication service. You start at just $10 a month for unlimited talk and text, but then pay just $5 per month per gigabyte that you actually use each month. And you get access to the best nationwide coverage in America, as well as Ting's award-winning customer service. Head on over to the link in the description to check your current phone, make an account, choose the right plan for you, and Ting will send you a SIM card to get activated in minutes. The next generation of Ting Mobile is here. See how much you can save at eposvox.ting.com and save $25 on your phone bill today. So as I was doing my personal ripping to rip the HD DVDs that I own in my collection and make this tutorial, I started running into some discs that started giving me errors. I got some weird messages where it couldn't even open the disc, uh, such as uh, error random positioning error occurred or... Um, medium error, unrecovered read error, as well as some USB timeout issues. Now, the USB timeout issue is actually a common-ish, it's a not uncommon problem with using USB optical drives for ripping, especially with Make MKV, where essentially trying to load a certain section of the video or whatever can take so long that it times out, the USB connection times out and it loses signal and it just can't finish the rip, which is why I typically recommend in my videos internal drives. And especially since this is a USB 2.0 drive, that's a lot of data to send over USB 2.0, which is, hasn't been historically super reliable. And if you're buying them used and old, they could be beat up or whatever. So I dropped the money on getting an internal drive. First, I had to do some research to figure out what internal HD DVD burner or ripper drives were available because there weren't very many made for the computer. Um, and I had landed on a specific model, which I believe was GGW H20L. And this was an LG unit, which was a desktop five and a quarter inch drive that supported both Blu-ray and HD DVDs. Combo drive, perfect. Seemed like what I wanted could swap out one of my extra, most of my main desktop towers have two Blu-ray drives because I'm usually ripping on both. So I could just swap out one of those and not lose any functionality. I dropped $70 on this thing, again, versus the like $15 you can get the Xbox 360 drive for, and ended up running into the same errors. Not only that, but the movies that did rip were honestly not much faster. For whatever reason, the reading capacity of HD DVDs is significantly slower than a lot of the drives these days can do for Blu-rays or DVDs, which can read even faster. So it's still a slow process, and it didn't fix my issue. By the way, you may still be running into this USB issue, which is why I bring it up, because this may be one of the solutions for you, is that the USB isn't functioning for you. Now, I will say, looking on eBay right now, I see a couple listings for the GGW H20L. There's also one for the H20N. However, neither of these, the product images for them, show the HD DVD logo on it, which kind of concerns me because mine has it on there. So I'm almost wondering if this is a mistake or a different actual drive and it won't read HD DVDs. They have it in the title, but it doesn't show it on there. So you're kind of taking a gamble. You would probably get away with a uh, eBay return, even if they say no returns by saying it was a misleading listing or whatever, because they say HD DVD drive in the title. But if you're looking or you're trying to look locally or something, I would look for one that says HD DVD on the tray. Now, going back and forth between this drive and the Xbox 360 drive, there are a couple discs that initially I could not get ripped that finally ripped plain hot potato, just kind of getting it moved back and forth between drives. Eventually something actually worked. The problem is that this did not work for everything because one of the major issues plaguing the HD DVD format compared to Blu-ray is disc rot. Disc rot is a deterioration of the actual plastic layer that the data is carved into or lasered into or etched into over time it becomes degraded or rotted and no longer the disc can be read or it is read with errors or only chunks of it can be read and it causes a lot of problem for data backup this is why i covered a little while back uh backing up my data to certain blu-ray discs because they're 
theoretically supposed to last a lot longer, whereas a lot of early CD-ROMs are now starting to suffer from disc rot and things like that, and it's really not good. And apparently HD DVDs are suffering from disc rot as well. In fact, there are a lot, and we're talking, we're not talking cheap, you know, blank discs that people burned at home. We're talking retail movies end up with a milky color as they kind of degrade over time and become completely unreadable in players. And then there's a lot of HD DVD movies as well that become unreadable in rippers, but theoretically still work mostly fine in players. And so that's the issue I have run into here is the discs can be decrypted by Make MKV. It has all the decryption stuff needed for it. There's no issues there. It just has been degraded to a point that the type of communication required for ripping just cannot work. And for that, your only other option, if it does happen to work in an HD DVD player, if you have one of those available to play on your TV, is to use a capture card that bypasses HDCP or something and capture it in real time with the capture card, which is not ideal for anyone. Like I said, there's probably very little on the HD DVD format that is worth backing up in this way versus using a Blu-ray, but it's still something interesting worth considering. A couple of other notes about the HD DVD format. It is 1920 by 1080 still, but it uses the VC1 video codec. So if you go to play it and it doesn't want to play, you may be using a media player that doesn't have support for this really bizarre format. And so I recommend Media Player Classic Home Cinema or VLC if you want to play those. Um, also, the disc bitrate is actually half that of Blu-ray. So Blu-rays are between... 28 and 45 megabits per second. I think the standard at one point was 28, but I have a lot that are higher bitrate than that. And of course, Blu-rays are burned with variable bitrate or even variable quality factors uh, in the first place. Every HD DVD rip that I have is only about 15 to 24 megabits per second, depending on the movie, which is about half of what you get out of a Blu-ray. So. That's something interesting to consider, as it really was just lower quality. From there, you have a raw MKV rip of the movie on the disc as original quality as it gets. This is completely uncompressed from the disc. The disc itself is compressed, but you know, there's no further compression. Like I said, the different movies could be anywhere from 10 to 24 gigabytes, depending on the disc. I'd say 24 is a rare, like really long movie. Uh, the normal size movies that I run into are about 10 to 11 gigabytes. Um, and from there, you can throw it on your Plex server and add it into your normal movies like a DVD rip or a Blu-ray rip and just make sure you rename the, make the MKV file, put it in a folder with the movie name as well, maybe the year on the end, and then Plex will pick it up and play it just like anything else and transcode it if need be. If you don't want to store that big of a file and you want some compression applied, then I recommend picking up Handbrake and they have a plethora of different presets for 1080p, for uh, 4K, you're not doing 4K here, but you know, they have some basic encoding presets that will crunch down the movie without sacrificing too much quality. And that's also a free program available to you as well. So that's something you can consider. Hope this video was helpful for you. Hope you learned a little something. The HD DVD format definitely lost the format war to Blu-ray. And it's kind of amusing that we continue to have this going on as we have UHD Blu-ray versus Blu-ray and we had the Xbox One consoles be the first ones to introduce UHD Blu-ray players versus Sony's own consoles not doing it but now they're both caught up I don't know hope this video was helpful to you hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe for more tech education I'm Vox, and I'll see you next time